Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Bob Jose. I serve here at Northeastern as the Associate Dean for Cultural, Residential, and Spiritual Life. And it's, it's my honor to welcome you to this vigil that we've called the Time for Remembrance, Reflection, and, and Resilience. We've been hurt as a community. We've been wounded. We have been knocked down to our foundation. Such is the case when we have situations like this. But what also occurs when the wounds are raw, like the ones that were experienced yesterday, confusion, doubt, and on the back of that crawls up fear that threatens to paralyze us and in many cases cause, causes us to question many of the things that we believe, the things that we held dear. I'm happy to see so many of us, so many of us come because what it tells me is that we stand by our presence here. We stand and affirm what this community stands for, what we believe in, what we value, what we hold dear. It's important in times of great hurt and pain that we rally around those things that strengthen us and lift us up. I was looking at Twitter not too long before I came in here and there's something that I thought was appropriate for the moment. It said, when Gotham City needs a hero, it calls Batman. When Boston needs a hero, it looks to the person next to them. We, together here, we will be the reason that this community pulls through. Again, we've called it a time for remembrance, reflection, and resilience. Remembrance, we must remember what happens here. Often, in times of great pain, we want to hit the delete button, if you will. But we must remember. And let that remembrance spur us on to vigilance. We're a free people. We are free. But vigilance is the price of freedom. We want to remember those who fell, those who still fight for their lives. We will remember them. We will reflect. We'll ask ourselves the question, what does this mean to me? How, how can I be more of a con contributor to the community? What role do I play in making sure that things like this never happen again? How do I feel about what has occurred? And what will I do with my feelings? Then there's resilience. Again, when things like this happen often, often the first question is why? Why did this happen? And there will be time for whys. The questions will be answered. But the question, the, the words most important right now is not why. It's how are we going to come together to support everyone who is here? How are we going to strengthen our community? How are we going to help those amongst us who are in need of help right now? I would submit to you that is the most important question. So as we go through this period of time, I would implore us to remember that we are here for a reason, a very important reason. We are Northeastern. We are our community. And we stand fast in the times of great trouble and difficulty, ready to serve and help those who need. I'm going to ask if everyone would just take just a moment for silent reflection.
Thank you. I've invited staff from the Center for Spirituality, Dialogue, and Service to offer prayers from their respective traditions. We come together as a community, as a family, to understand the values that move the world in which we live. We come together as a community, as a family, to understand the acts that threaten our world. We come determined to find the values that will right the world. We come determined to restore justice to an unjust world. May we stand firm as we pray for peace for our families and for our country. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, HaTomechet Banu Behavienu, Or Lechoshech Marpe Lechever, Veshalom Lechol Yoshve Tevel. Blessed are you, source of life, who helps us to bring light where there is darkness, healing where there is brokenness, and peace to all the earth's inhabitants. Offer this as a prayer. Please participate as you feel comfortable. Lord, we come together in sadness this afternoon. We come to remember those who died and those who were injured in the violent attack we witnessed downtown yesterday. We grieve for their families, in a particular way for the family of Martin Richard and Crystal Campbell. Pray for spouses, partners, friends of those dead and wounded. Our hearts are comforted in the awareness that we are not alone, that others share our confusion, our doubt, our anxiety, and our pain over this senseless criminal act. We're strengthened by the courage we witnessed by the heroic efforts of emergency personnel, as well as ordinary citizens, to save lives and console loved ones. We thank you, God, for these reassuring signs of humanity in the midst of an inhuman act of violence. Lord, keep us safe. At times like these, we're reminded that life is a gift and every day a unique and unrepeatable blessing. Let us reach out to those we love and tell them again how much they mean to us today. Let us reach out to those directly affected by the attacks and let them know that our thoughts and prayers are with them. Let us reach out to those in our community of different faiths and backgrounds and nationalities to express solidarity and reject any seeds of distrust that the attackers may have wished to sow. God grant us hope today. Hope is a fragile flame in this violent world. But hope grows brighter in times that are dark Make us bright today with hope and help us to affirm the goodness in humanity that daily heroically resists such evil in great and also ordinary ways. We choose this hope over despair or cynicism or bitterness. Unite us in this hope and give us once again the joy of life that sustains us as a campus community at Northeastern University and in this great city of Boston. Amen. Hear these words of comfort. Let us pray. Gracious God, you walk with us through the valley of the shadow of death. We pray that the suffering and the terrorized be surrounded by the healing power of love. May every human being be reminded of the precious gift of life. May all of our hearts be pierced with compassion for those who suffer. For your love is the only healing balm we know. May the dead be received into your enfolding arms, and may your friends here on earth show the grieving they are not alone as they walk this veil of tears. O oh, Holy One, you have made each and every one of us in your image. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Guard us from fear, 
break down the walls that separate us, unite us in bonds of love, and journey with us as we face our pain and confusion, bringing healing to all those who grieve and mourn. O oh God, you have bound us together in a common life. Help us in the midst of our struggles for justice and truth to comfort one another with words of compassion, mutual forbearance, and respect. We ask all of this for love's sake. Amen. I'd like to offer a traditional Islamic prayer for peace in Arabic and English to ask for peace for our hearts and our spirits and for the heart of our community, for Boston, for our nation, and for all those who don't have peace in their lives in this world. source of peace and from your grace comes peace and what returns me to you is peace blessed are you our Lord the most exalted the owner of majesty and bounty amen in a prayer for our community O blessed one, we call upon you, the infinitely merciful, the singularly compassionate, and ask you to bestow your grace and your healing on all those who have been afflicted by this tragedy. We ask you to heal the hearts of those who feel broken, to send forth your tranquility to those experiencing fear, and that you will strengthen those who feel weakened. We ask you that this tragedy never serves to divide us, but to unite us as one human family, working together towards harmony, towards happiness, and towards unity. We plead with you, O Holy One, to send forth your perfect healing to all those afflicted by this tragedy and to fill them with your eternal peace. Amen. Would you pray with me as you feel comfortable? Almighty God and Heavenly Father, we come before you with a mix of lots of different feelings and thoughts and emotions, um, sadness and anger and confusion, um, feelings of being shocked and, and scared. God, all of us with heavy hearts. Thank you that you are a God who welcomes us all, a God who is no stranger to suffering, whose heart breaks alongside of ours with the brokenness of the world. God, thanks that you're a God who sits with us in pain and walks with us in darkness. So God, we we do pray for our neighbors who are hurting, uh, the many who are injured, um, who are in hospitals and waiting and for different operations. Would you give them healing and hope? Would you hold them up at this time? God, would you be light in their darkness? And we pray for the families of those who lost loved ones. God, would you have mercy would you give them comfort? And would you surround them with reminders that 
they are seen and known and loved and and will not be forgotten. And God, we also ask that you would give our community strength, wisdom, and initiative to love our neighbors as, as you do, God, to see people as you do. God, the, would the walls of apathy and individualism be broken down as we feel the pangs of this city together, as we bear this heaviness together, God? Would that our eyes would be opened to each other. God, help us to be present to one another, to extend hope, encouragement, forgiveness, and love with a compassion that reflects the heart of sacrificial love that you have for us. Would you raise our community here at Northeastern to stand? Would we be a community of grace and of hospitality and of understanding and of love? God, you are our refuge and our strength and our ever-present help in trouble. And therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, and though the waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, God, you are with us. Would you give us courage and hope today? In Jesus' name, amen. As you came in, many of you were given candles. If you haven't, I would invite you to turn them on. Just a simple twist. It's our symbol of solidarity and unity as we stand putting the light up to dispel the darkness. We're going to hear now from our president. Joseph Allen. Good afternoon. What happened yesterday, and you heard it, has been very difficult on every member of our community. And by community, I don't focus only on our community here at Northeastern, but our community in Boston, and whoever has been impacted by this ugly and senseless act of terror. It was a celebration of the human spirit. It was meant to be a celebration for the whole community, and it was turned into fear, anger, and death resulted and many, as you know, were injured. I started receiving very early on yesterday emails, messages, and I would like to celebrate first the early responders among us who are here today. I received pictures about them, not from them, I received messages on what they have done. They helped members of the community. They helped the wounded. We had students from PT with their faculty advisors who are absolutely terrific. And yes, they are shaken. We have students from nursing. We had various runners who helped each other, fraternities, sororities. So I would like to acknowledge you all. I would like you to raise your light if you have one, so we can thank you. And thank you for what you have done.
I also would like to thank public safety, the staff, the faculty who have spent every hour since the incident to make the community feel supported and feel safe. Many of them are here today. They are, they will not be visible every minute, but they are here for all of us. I really would like us to thank them for the magnificent work that they are doing. Thank you very much. Let me tell you where we are today. Dr. Mantella and I visited Tufts Medical because we were told that we have two students there. We visited the two students, the two Sarahs, and while we were there, and the two Sarahs were fine, actually they were roommates, and thank God they were put together in the same room. But a nurse practitioner came and said, you have another, another student. So we went to visit, visit her. And Victoria had one thing on her mind. Somebody who's a veteran, not, we don't have his full name, we're trying to track him down, helped her. And she wanted to find him. She wanted to thank him because he saved her life. And then she pointed out that we have two parents that were impacted. One was at Tufts, the father was at Tufts. We visited with him, but his wife was at Boston Medical. We also visited with her. The reason I mention that is that we need to know we are, you know, when an incident, a tragedy, or a pro problem happens, like the one we faced, they are not going to let the university know. They are going to let the family know first. And this is where you need, we need your help. If you know anyone, any member of the community, of our extended community, who has been hurt, who needs help, who needs comfort, let us know. Those early respondents that we acknowledge are becoming the respondents. They are no longer early. They will continue to respond. But every one of you has been responding. And the fact that you are here today, this afternoon, is because you felt that it is important, an important statement, that this com community come together. We decided to keep the campus open on purpose. Not only because we don't want terror to paralyze us, because it is in these times that we need each other. We are here for each other. Each one is here for her neighbor. We also decided to have this vigil today because we needed to be together. Some suggested close the campus. Some suggested no vigil is too early. It's never too early to be together. It's never too early to hug each other. It's never too early to say, I am here for you. We are here for you, and each one of us is here for the other. That's what makes us a special community. We are here for you, and everyone is here for the other. As you've just heard, it's very important for the community to come together in times of joy, 
and in times of sadness. I would encourage everyone to look to your left, look to your right. Introduce, give your name to the person who is next to you. Share with them briefly a little bit about how you feel about all of this and your hopes that you have for healing and transformation. Just for a moment. Can I pull us all back together? Thank you. Thank you. We'll shortly end this time of coming together. It is my sincere hope that what we do here will not be forgotten when we walk out the door that we remember and that we reflect upon what has occurred and be determined to go from this place to make a positive difference within this community, within our world. Each one of us has that capacity and has been called to that. We have Many of you have shared the, the need, if you will, to share your thoughts and would like to do so. I've been informed uh, that outside our doors here, there is a camera. Uh, the university has made, a, made it available if anyone just wants to share what they feel as you leave, right to the left. There is a camera and it will be for the use of us as a community, part of our remembrance, part of our reflection, and hopefully what will help cause us to be resilient through this tragedy. We have a song, and I'm going to ask uh, all of us to sing it if you feel so led. Uh, it's called Peace, Shalom, Shalom. And one of our very own, Mr. Dan Arias, will lead us. So we can just uh, <coughs> connect to our heart, connect to those around us, and especially keep in mind uh, anyone and everyone. So you can just join in when you catch the melody. P. 
פי סלאם שלום, 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 פי סלאם שלום. without knowing the resources that are available to anyone who needs them. The staff at UHCS is available. The team in the Center for Spirituality, Dialogue and Service, they are available. We Care Network, located in 104L, is available. For those of you who live in our residence halls, If there's someone that you'd like to talk to, find your resident assistant. They will guide you and direct you to the assistance that you feel that you need. Our community, again, has been hurt. But we are resilient. And we will come back from this. Vigilant. Stronger. Working for peace. As you leave, I would encourage you, as our Executive Director of Spirituality, Dialogue and Service would say if he were here, to greet each other with a sign of peace, a hug, a handshake, whatever you feel comfortable with. It is good for us to be together. Northeastern, we are one. Have a good afternoon.